mailing. Right now, free speech is under heavy attack in New Zealand and overseas, with governments constantly devising new ways to enforce censorship. To make sure you never miss the critical news and breaking stories you rely on, join the RCR mailing list today. Get connected now at realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Right now it's time for Olivia's View. Olivia Pearson, welcome back to The Crunch. Oh, what thanks, Ken. What have you got for me this week? Let me guess. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably no surprise, but um, I'm going to talk about what happened at that rally in Pennsylvania on Saturday, so I'll just launch right in. Go straight into that. Okay. So, if angels fight... Weak men must fall, for heaven still guards the right. That's Shakespeare's Richard II, spoken just before the king realises that his kingdom has been lost. Well, I've never seen a man who is blessed with a more powerful guardian angel than President Trump. He came so close to death on Saturday at the rally in Pennsylvania, and the Secret Service clearly failed him. It was no thanks to them that he survived that first volley of shots. It came down to a random turn of his head. Then he dropped down to the ground before his bodyguards covered him and got him out. Thankfully, a SWAT team sniper took down the shooter. For someone like me who has followed Trump's dramatic foray into politics eagerly over the last nine years, I can only say that I'm not surprised by what happened last Saturday although I do remain thoroughly disgusted that his murder in the minds of some is a strategy to stop him from winning another election. Trump has had nothing from the political environment except demonization. From the moment he came down that Trump Tower escalator with Melania to announce his candidacy in 2015, the pitch of political discourse became febrile and the whole media machine throughout the entire world mocked, derided, abused, and defamed him every single day and every single night. Yet, I watched him become a powerful and deeply effective president as his enemies indulged in every psychodrama they could think of, from false sex assault allegations to impeachment trials, Russia collusion, and insurrection charges for January the 6th. But none of it worked. So he stalwartly tried again for a third time. That's heart. And this time being subjected to even more hostilities via weaponized lawfare so his political opponents could besmirch him as a convicted felon throughout the election. But his favorable polls, poll numbers, just keep growing higher. Only a few weeks ago, we watched him try to do a debate with Biden where the world saw the truth of Biden's very real brain damage. And a coup within the Democrat Party was put into motion, led by Obama. Hubristically, a whole bunch of Hollywood actors, spurred on by George Clooney, voiced their vapid opinions in the mistaken notion that the world gives a hoot in hell about actors' political urges. The Democrats were in free fall as the party looked to be collapsing in on itself just months out from the coming election. Then, lo and behold, an attempt on Trump's life suddenly occurred. The media spin is telling us it was a lone wolf shooter, 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks, who seems to have the usual profile, friendless, funny-looking, social outcast, gun nut. Well, if anyone believes this lone wolf theory, then I have a big new shiny bridge to sell you at cost. The Secret Service are responsible for the security of these rallies. They send in advance teams to do a survey and then request the resources from HQ in Washington, D.C. that the team suggests are needed. The fact that at that rally venue, there was an unsecured open rooftop with a ladder only 150 metres away from President Trump's podium position is unheard of. If you listen to people who know how to do this job, such as Dan Bongino, who used to be a security agent for the Secret Service, 
Bongino told Fox News that we are trained out to a thousand yards with the Secret Service counter sniper team. How did they miss someone only one fifth of the way there in broad daylight on a white roof? Bongino also said that he knows for a fact that the Trump team have been asking the service for more resources that have been rebuffed. A Secret Service spokesperson claims that this is a false claim. Bongino said it is not a false claim and that there needs to be proper congressional and oversight hearings into how the service so catastrophically failed not only Donald Trump, but also the others who were shot, one of them to death. 50-year-old, much-loved husband and father, Corey Comperatori. Many people saw the shooter crawling around on the rooftop with his AR-15. They alerted police well before he was even set up and able to shoot off any rounds. Josh Hawley, Republican senator for Missouri, has written a letter to the Senate Homeland Security Committee demanding an immediate full investigation into the massive security failure that resulted in an attempt on President Trump's life and the murder of an innocent American. That letter reads, quote, Although we do not have all the facts, the little that we do know suggests a staggering security failure. I call on you to launch a full public and comprehensive committee investigation into this assassination attempt and failures to adequately protect the former president. This investigation must include public testimony, hearings, and robust oversight over the relevant federal departments as they respond to this assassination attempt. Sworn testimony must be heard from Alejandro Mayorkas, Security of the Department of Homeland Security, and Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheetle, nothing should be classified or withheld from the public. End quote. The last thing Republican leaders want now is another JFK style cover up with the real facts of the intelligence agencies being classified and hidden from the public for the next 60 years. After Trump was inaugurated as president in 2017, it became a common occurrence for dumb celebrities to openly fantasize about his assassination. Even just off the top of my head, I can bring to mind several examples. Tasteless comedian Kathy Griffin holding up a severed tr Trump head, dripping with blood, while ISIS was rampaging through Syria and Iraq, beheading people in real time. Johnny Depp at the Glastonbury Festival saying, while off his face on drugs. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? This said to great laughter and whoops from a zombified crowd of utter morons. Madonna admitting at a women's march while wearing her pussy hat that she had thought long and hard about blowing up the White House. Even though we don't expect much sense out of her plastic head, the bimbo foolishness of that statement said publicly was quite shocking. There was even a New York City production of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, which had Caesar dressed up as a Donald Trump lookalike, with wig, suit and red tie, as he was stabbed to death on the Senate floor. These expressed fantasies about Trump's death became commonplace, normalizing talk of violence against the man. There were also the many, many commentators who constantly compared Trump to Hitler. One psychiatrist, Alan Francis, told Brian Stelter on CNN, quote, Trump is as destructive a person in this century as Hitler, Stalin and Mao were in the last century. He may be responsible for many more million deaths than they were, unquote. The entire Biden-Harris campaign message, on the odd occasion when they even bother to campaign at all, is built solely around Trump being a dictator, if he gets into office again, who will end American democracy altogether. They have repeated over and over again that Trump is a threat to America. So the, att the attempted assassination on Trump was an inside job. Trump's and America's real enemies, the Democrats, 
have a term they like to use called stochastic terrorism, where extreme rhetoric is used to intentionally incite random acts of violence. Here is the Bunny Boiler squad member, AOC, who has a particular fondness for this term. I think it's uncomfortable um, serving with people who engage in what many experts deem stochastic terrorism, which is the incitement of violence in a, uh, which is an incitement of violence using digital means and large platforms. So that individual themselves may not be the one that's wielding a weapon. Glenn Beck was accused of stochastic terrorism. So was Alex Jones. And so, of course, was Trump. And now Trump's VP pick, J.D. Vance, is being accused of it because he blames the White House for the attempted assassination of Trump. The left, with this one clunky engineered term, combine their aversion to free speech with their love of fomenting violence, then claim it is a tactic that conservatives are using. Yet neither Beck, nor Jones, nor Trump, nor Vance actually have fomented violence through their rhetoric. But the Democrats sure have, because they have control of 80% of the 24-hour media machine on America's airwaves, they actually did manage to create a culture of violent hysteria. The George Floyd riots alone showed us that in 2020. And here is former Democrat Senator Claire McCaskill on MSNBC at the end of last year telling the world that Trump is more dangerous than Hitler and Mussolini. A lot of people have tried to draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler and the use of the terminology like vermin and the, the, the drive that those men had towards autocracy and, and dictatorship. The difference, though, I think makes Donald Trump even more dangerous, and that is he has no philosophy he believes in. He is not trying to expand the boundaries of the United States of America. He's not trying to overcome a neighboring country like Putin is in Ukraine. He is not going for some grandiose scheme of international dominance. All he wants is to look in the mirror and see a guy who's president. All he cares about is selfish self-promotion. That's the only philosophy he has, which makes him even more dangerous because he has actually said out loud that it would be okay to terminate the Constitution to keep him in power. He said this. He actually said those words. And the irony is all of these supposed conservative folks that have populated the Republican Party all stood around and with their, with their thumb in their mouth going, well, yeah, OK, I guess so. It's, it's bizarre. Trump never said to terminate the Constitution any more than he told people to inject themselves with household bleach to cure COVID. He said two years out of office, that the widespread election fraud of 2020 should terminate the rules and regulations, even those found in the Constitution. And he was right. The Constitution does not allow for election fraud, so should have made that election mute. The Democrats subverted it, and the Republicans were too weak to hold them accountable because of the magnitude of deceit and lawfare under the guise of COVID that they managed to pull off. Trump never sexually assaulted any woman. He never committed any felony in any state, and he never incited any insurrection. But these people want everyone to believe that he did all these things and that he is worse than Hitler and Mussolini, which is to dehumanize him. Joe Biden said at his rally last weekend to camera, it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. Now, this is how you can effectively push an assassination into the reality of human events without even having to bother with actively recruiting or training a patsy, a fall guy. All the Democrats have to do in this toxic environment that they consciously created is to pull back on security details and a hate-fueled misfit will do the rest. So the pulling back on security details is exactly what transpired in Pennsylvania 
according to Dan Bongino, and numerous other counter snipers, snipers, and ex military operatives or ex secret service agents who have come out of the woodwork to comment on the unbelievable negligence which took place at that rally. The protocol for a consciously created assassination or terrorist attempt then looks like this, and it is as simple as one plus one equals two. Create ridiculously extreme rhetoric and play it through all media organs 24-7. Plus, withhold what Trump needs to keep him safe. Equals highest chance for optimal conditions for random assassination to occur. And after a violent act has occurred, all the Democrat leaders send nice messages of condolences and prayers to the family while hiding behind the ever-present farce of plausible deniability. This hit on Trump may be the clearest example of stochastic terrorism ever seen, a term Democrats pushed to attempt to morally condemn the rhetoric of others while they set about deploying it at Trump, knowing full well how it works. It's their baby. It's their term. They know that because it is their tactic and invention. Whether this assassination attempt was a case of that or a genuine patsy recruited for the job by the intelligence blob, which is highly possible given what a 20-year-old kid managed to achieve in broad daylight without being stopped, remains to be examined through proper congressional investigation. But it must be done and done swiftly. Either way, it was an inside job. But Trump still lives, and one can only put that down to providence. So he seems to have an important mission to accomplish in this lifetime that nobody else can do in such a manufactured climate of weaponized political hate. I believe Donald Trump is here to save the republic. It's his destiny. And whatever gods may be, they seem to love him. And I do too. And that is Olivia's view for The Crunch this week. Wow, Olivia, that was fantastic. But, you, you know, when you put it all like that, it does look like a strategy from the Democratic Party to kill Donald Trump. And if you look at, go back to the Clinton years, what did it, uh, you know Hillary Clinton talk about uh, when she was campaigning against Trump? The deplorables. You know, basket the, of deplorables. Basket of deplorables. They're the people yep. who support Trump. Uh, you know, more than 50% of the voters. Uh, she described as a basket of deplorables. Biden, yep. from, the, from the very get-go, has always demonized Trump. Uh, you know, just an hour before Trump took the stage to make that speech, he put on Facebook that the that the country needed leaders, not dictators. Yeah. And it, is it coincidental that there was an article, uh, you know, in a left-wing journal about him being Hitler-esque Another one that said described him as a Caesar. Uh, numerous talking heads that say Trump must be stopped at any cost. Is it a coincidence? At I, any cost. What what the hell does that mean? But right they keep saying it. You know, a threat know. to democracy. Hitler yeah. is a dictator. The media are in on this. You know, they they've they even the thing about the Supreme Court that upheld upheld the Constitution and said no. President Trump is uh, protected by executive privilege. They now vow and declare that the Supreme Court has made him a king. Americans hate kings. Mm, right? well, they, they deposed do. a king. They re revolted against a king. Sure did. But all they said was, no, it's there in the Constitution. Mm. But somehow it was the Supreme Court creating Donald Trump as a king, again demonizing him. Yeah, and that's also why they keep um, repeating this lie that he wants to um, eradicate the Constitution. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, the Democrats want the Constitution gone, not the Republicans. And I just want to say, Cam, too, that I felt very, very emotional when I saw Trump go down like that. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very upsetting. I can only imagine how his family felt. They're messing with our guy, you know, so hard. But then he stood up, pumped his fist, blood on his face, had the presence of mind to feel for the crowd mm. and know what they were watching and speak to them 
to let them know he was okay. And I got to say, I just burst into tears. And today, watching him walk into that Republican National Convention to great love from his supporters with a white bandage over his ear and tears in his eyes, he was moved. Yeah. Um, my God, that undid me. And after such an emotional weekend where, you know, I spent, I, I, I alternated between pure fury mm. and tears to see what, what was done to him. But there he is still standing and so strong, but still a little ex- exhausted. I don't mind saying it made me blub. <laughs> <laughs> what I couldn't get over though, was the absolute ham-fisted way the, secu- uh, the Secret Service acted. Now, yep. they, like Trump's a big man. He, he's six foot five. No, something. no, he's no, he's six foot two. A six foot two. We're still yeah, a big yeah. man. Yeah, right? he's a big guy. Yeah. And they've got a bunch of pygmies that are protecting him. Well, they can't protect him. There's one woman uh security uh service person there who's standing in front of Trump and her head doesn't even get to his shoulders. <laughs> I know. Right? Yeah, so D E I. How can they protect uh somebody with a huge presence like that? Um you, and then, of course, there's all the videos of the the blokes who were the uh, sec- Secret Service guys piling in on top, and then then some of the also runs. In fact, the ironic one is is the short little dumpy one who couldn't even find her holster. Yeah, and hid, hid behind a barricade. And hid behind a barricade. You know, it was astonishing. Yep. But like you, I I cannot believe that they left a rooftop with if, which is effectively a chip shot, 140 yards. Right, it's not even 140 meters, 140 yards. Some someone who's skilled with firearms could make that shot at a present, even side on, because it's the only view that they had of Trump side on, and therefore the only viable shot was at his head. That's an easy shot. For even someone. without even without a telescopic sight, that's quite an easy shot. Hey, yeah, it is. If, you, if you're good, if you're good it, with a without a sight, if you've got a sight, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, you know, and, and to give you an example, I've taken people who are non-shooters to a range. I've stuck an egg on a post at 100 metres, and then within about five or six shots, they've been able to shoot the egg off the post. Yeah. It's, the, it's easy to do. Yeah. So I can't believe that they had A, uh, our rooftop unsecured, B, that the two guys who were on the rooftop behind Trump took so long to react when they were told, they must have had it in the earpieces, hey, there's a guy with a gun. And you can I see- know, that's so suspicious, Cam. So, you know, I agree, there has to be a, a um, an inquiry there. But yeah. This reminds me, though, of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Now, yeah. Kennedy was going to withdraw from Vietnam, and the military-industrial complex thought, no, we're not going to have that, so they killed him. And who took over? Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. And they stayed in Vietnam. Now, Trump has said he's going to end the war in Ukraine. Yeah. And support Israel. And support but Israel. More than, well, more than Biden does. And, you know, Trump's not talking bullshit about two-state solutions either, is he? No, no. So no, he doesn't. It's a terrible, terrible thing, but it's amazing he survived. And it'll be very, very hard for anyone to try and kill him now. Oh, look, I I really feel that. I I feel like the fog is lifting. Everything is being exposed and there's still, there's still a ways to go. Of course, we know we can't, can't get, feel too lucky, but there's, there's a change. I I just feel people can see the Democrats for the evil party they are and the terrible things they've done. And the most beautiful thing to me is that people are now starting to see Trump as the real life political hero. I've always known he was, Mm. you know, we are damn lucky if a person like that comes along politically once in our lifetimes, you know, and he is that guy. And I've always realized that. And He's taken on the whole establishment um, and it has fired the full force of its hate against him. And he, here he is about to win another presidency. He is remarkable. And um, I just I'm, well, I feel thing. lucky to be alive to watch this. I mean, that's the thing, Olivia, the, the Biden campaign's entire narrative was that Trump is a, a threat, dictator, a yeah. threat to democracy. Yeah. And therefore, he needs to be taken out. And, and they might say, oh, we meant electorally. We meant at the ballot box. Well, whatever. 
that's their rhetoric, that he mm. is an enemy of the state. Well, that they he- came up with that awful term, stochastic terrorism. Their yeah. side use it. You know, they know what they're doing. Their entire campaign is based around that. They can't use that anymore. No, they can't. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, you know, they've they've brainwashed the feeble mind of Joe Biden to say those words. Now he has to learn new words when he's in no state to learn new words. <laughs> to learn anything. So can you imagine what the next thing is going? I mean, it's just it's it's insane. Right? And but, can you imagine how good the debate between Kamala Harris and JD Vance is going to be? Yeah. Kamala giggling Harris versus uh, you know, a, a guy who has been in the Marines. Uh, knows how to handle himself uh, and says some pretty amazing things himself. Yeah, he does. He's good enough to write a book. You know, what's yeah, good. Oh, and everybody, uh, read, his, Hill, uh, read Hillbilly El- Elegy if you haven't already. It is such a rollicking good read um, and really touching. It's a very touching book about his upbringing and his saving grace was his grandmother who raised him. Um, yeah, and it was on the uh, – it's probably still on the – New York Times bestseller list. I mean, they only ever have 200 books up there at once. I'll change it now, that's for sure. The New York Times will change that. Anyway, yeah. Lamia, great to have you on The Crunch again. It's a fantastic view, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot of mail about that, which I'll forward through to you when it comes through. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Cam. Talk soon. Tell me what you think about Olivia's view. Email inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thank you for tuning in to RCR Reality Check Radio. If you like what you're listening to, just like what you're listening to. Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We would love to hear from you. So connect with us today.